Welcome to Owensboro Health Surgical Weight Loss Center. This brief video will help you determine if weight loss surgery might be right for you. We will discuss two surgical procedures along with benefits and risks of each, so you can make informed decisions in pursuing your surgical weight loss journey. Hi, I'm Michelle Ford, Nurse Navigator for the Surgical Weight Loss Center. We're delighted you're considering bariatric surgery at Owensboro Health. Our team of multidisciplinary experts is here to guide you each step of your weight loss journey. In the past four years, it's been our pleasure to help more than 750 patients lose weight and gain healthier and happier lives. And with our Center of Excellence accreditation, you can have confidence that you will receive the very best care right here close to home. I'm Dr. Ravi Alapati. I'm a board certified general surgeon and have fellowship training in laparoscopic bariatric surgery. One of the main reasons why I decided to focus on bariatric surgery is that every single one of those obesity related problems either completely resolve or are greatly improved. There's nothing else that can give me more satisfaction as a surgeon or as a physician than to be able to do one procedure and fix two, three, four or multiple medical issues that a patient is experiencing. As a surgeon, it cannot get any better than that. Obesity is associated with um, multiple health problems and we mention those as comorbidities and they include diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, pulmonary disease, GYN abnormalities or menstrual abnormalities, osteoarthritis, depression, stroke, gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, we also call GERD, and uh, also cancer. There's an increased risk of patients uh, developing cancer being obese. And, um, a combination of these or individually they can cause premature deaths. And one of the main reasons is cardiovascular deaths. And when especially patients have diabetes, high blood pressure and high cholesterol as a combination, it's called metabolic syndrome and that's a setup for having major cardiac events and death. So the benefits of bariatric surgery are every single medical issue which I mentioned is either completely resolved or significantly easier to manage. These are outcomes specific to our surgical weight loss program at Owensboro Health. At one year post-bariatric surgery, 74% of our patients with type 2 diabetes have seen either a complete resolution or a reduction in severity of their diabetes. Also, at one year post-op, 55% of our patients with high blood pressure saw reduction or resolution of hypertension. Also, 59% of our patients with obstructive sleep apnea no longer needed a CPAP or other assistive device after one year. And of our patients with high cholesterol, 45% of them saw resolution or reduction of hyperlipidemia within one year. Owensboro Health offers two bariatric surgical procedures, the Ruin Y gastric bypass and the vertical gastric sleeve, also called sleeve gastrectomy. Both are laparoscopic surgeries with low complication rates and short hospital stays. Both procedures begin by accessing the abdominal cavity with small incisions. Trocars are placed to serve as passageways for surgical instruments. The surgeon examines the abdomen using a laparoscopic or video camera. The average human stomach can expand to hold around 1 to 1.5 liters of food. While in the stomach, food is combined with digestive enzymes which help break the food down into a simpler form so that it can be digested more easily and absorbed in the small bowel. During a gastric bypass, a small pouch is created in the stomach using a stapling device. The small stomach pouch, about the size of an egg, limits the amount of food you can eat before feeling full. The small bowel is separated into two sections. 
the lower portion of the small bowel is attached to the newly created stomach pouch. This allows food to pass directly into the second portion of the small bowel where digestion continues. The upper portion of the small bowel is reconnected to the lower section. Bile and pancreatic fluids from the liver and pancreas allow food to be digested completely. By altering the anatomy of the gastrointestinal tract, gastric bypass results in decreased hunger and increased feelings of fullness after meals. This procedure also decreases the amount of calories and nutrients absorbed by the body. During a sleeve gastrectomy, a thin vertical sleeve is created by using a stapling device. This sleeve will typically hold between 50 and 150 milliliters and is about the size of a banana. The resected portion of the stomach is removed. Bile and pancreatic fluid from the liver and pancreas mix with food and allow it to be completely digested and absorbed in the bowel. By altering the anatomy of the gastrointestinal tract, sleeve gastrectomy results in decreased hunger and increased feelings of fullness after meals. There is no rerouting of the small bowel or postoperative adjustments needed for the sleeve gastrectomy. You might be wondering, how do bariatric surgeries help you lose weight? Both procedures assist with rapid and sustained weight loss by restricting the amount of food that can be consumed. The gastric bypass is both restrictive and malabsorptive, meaning the procedure decreases the amount of calories and nutrients absorbed by the body, aiding in weight loss. Average expected weight loss is slightly greater for gastric bypass as compared to sleeve gastrectomy. Success of both procedures depends greatly on patients' commitment to making dietary and lifestyle changes. Many people who struggle with their weight experience this frustrating cycle. This is Judy, and she wants to lose weight, so she begins a diet and starts exercising. Her hormones respond by trying to maintain her body weight and fat levels at her current metabolic set point. The hormones do this by decreasing Judy's metabolism and increasing her hunger. Before she knows it, Judy is right back where she started, and she probably gained a few pounds. Bariatric surgery helps break this cycle by adjusting the body's hormones. Now, Judy is able to eat less and exercise more, and her hormones now allow her to maintain lower body fat and a much healthier weight. Most patients experience rapid weight loss that can continue for two or more years after the procedure. Our patients at Owensboro Health lose an average of 98 pounds in the first year after surgery. It's important to note that results are measured as a percentage of excess weight, which is the patient's weight at time of surgery subtracted by their ideal weight. Clinical studies show that on average, during the first six months after bariatric surgery, patients lose 30 to 50% of their excess weight. In the first 12 months on average, patients lose up to 77% of their excess weight. Some weight gain does typically occur in the two-year range, but we see that the average long-term sustained weight loss for 10 to 14 years is still 50 to 60% of excess weight. Also want to mention about general complications of both the sleeve and the bypass. Even though these are laparoscopically done, sometimes you know patients can also develop some abdominal hernias in those small incisions. Patients also can have some chest pain and collapsed lung. It rarely happens, but I like to just mention even a remote possibility of a complication happening so that you're aware of what can happen. And uh, that's because uh, for when, when we do these procedures, we put gas into the abdomen, which can cause that chest discomfort, pushes on the diaphragm. Dehydration, we see constipation or diarrhea, and sometimes with bariatric surgery, with significant weight loss, patients can develop stones in their gallbladder. GI inflammation or swelling, uh, stomal obstruction, and sometimes patients can have stretching of the gastric pouch or the sleeve, which can happen. And that's the reason why it's important to stick with the diet regime and follow um, our diet recommendations. Surgical procedure repeated is very, very rare, but if patients have complications in the long term, that needs to be done. 
And what we find is nausea and vomiting, which is a very short-term complication uh, of altering your stomach anatomy. So um, if you're having nausea and vomiting, you know, through the first few weeks, expect some of that, but if it's severe, keep us informed. This side effect called dumping syndrome can happen with the bypass, where you have vomiting, nausea, faintness, and diarrhea, all happening at one time, okay? And that happens, especially if you have high sugar content food or high sugar content liquids, where you start having all these symptoms happen at one particular time. It's called dumping syndrome, and this is one of the side effects which can happen with the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. For any of these procedures, you have to be on vitamins for life, okay? Very, very important and more so with the gastric bypass just because that absorption surface is decreased as well. Additional risks that come with any type of surgery include bleeding, pain, pneumonia, complications due to anesthesia and medications, deep vein thrombosis, injury to stomach, esophagus, or surrounding organs, infection, pulmonary embolism, and death. You will have the opportunity to discuss risks and complications with Dr. Alipati during your first office visit. During your surgical weight loss journey, you will be supported by our care team. You will meet one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Alipati to determine if weight loss surgery is a good option for you and to discuss which procedure would be best. You will also talk one-on-one -on -one with our staff dietitian to learn about dietary changes you will need to make before and after surgery. You will meet with our on-staff psychologist to discuss the mental and emotional challenges that accompany weight loss surgery. And as your nurse navigator, I will help you each step of the way. The rest of our support team includes physician assistants, nurses, medical assistants, and insurance coordinators. We are all here with one goal, to help you, our patients, be successful in losing weight and gaining healthier and happier lives. So I'm sure you're all wondering about which procedure is right for me, okay? So again, it's a multiple, multiple factors are considered, are taken into consideration before taking that decision. Your age, your obesity-related comorbid conditions as we talked about, the amount of weight to lose, uh, your lifestyle, your eating behaviors. And again, you know, everyone's hormone balance is different and it's unique to yourself. So we make that decision on a mutual basis when you come in to see me in the office for your first visit. And remember, surgery is a tool that requires your strong commitment to make a lifestyle change. And the surgeries work in the long term and work the best when you incorporate or understand that lifestyle change is important. And what we find is patients who follow up on a regular basis are the ones who are going to be successful in the long term. So lifetime of follow up is very, very important. The measure used to determine if someone is overweight or obese is called body mass index or BMI, which is a calculation of your height as compared to your weight. You can determine your body mass index by using the calculator found on our website. If your BMI is 25 to 29.9, you are considered overweight. Currently, 73% of adults in the U.S. are overweight. If your BMI is between 30 and 39.9, you are considered obese. Currently, in the U.S., 42% of adults are obese. If you have a BMI of 40 or greater, you are considered to be severely or morbidly obese. Currently in the U.S., 9% of adults are considered to be severely obese. To be eligible for weight loss surgery, the patient must have a body mass index or BMI of at least 35, accompanied by significant weight-related health conditions. Patients with a body mass index of 40 or greater are eligible with or without weight-related health conditions. Other eligibility factors include patients must be healthy enough to undergo a major operation 
and must be able to understand the surgery and its risk. A supervised weight loss trial is required by many health insurance carriers. This means that patients must have a physician document their attempts to lose weight. Patients must be free of drug and alcohol problems and have no uncontrolled psychological conditions. Patients must be free of all forms of tobacco use for at least three months before starting our program, which includes vaping and dipping. Patients must be able to pay our office administrative fee at their first visits. And lastly, patients must commit to a lifestyle of healthy habits and a lifetime of medical follow-ups. To get started, fill out the brief questionnaire at the bottom of this page. Once we receive your responses, we will contact you to discuss your next steps. Listen to what our patients say and look at before and after photos on our website at owensborohealth.org slash best self.